What is good friends, we are back with game 2 between Karen Smith and Sabella for ulti losers bracket finals. Uh, looking at Sabella's team, he already used that in last round, so we know all the sets, he specs Pelipper. Um, Z moves Zapdos with agility, specs Ash Greninja, um, sub SD Kartana, I think it was some damage boosting item like Muscle Band or some Plate. Salvas Megira and uh, Rocks reattacks Swampert. So Karen can just go for Skull, Toxic or Toxic Spikes here turn 1. Uh, Pelipper is most likely gonna fire off a Hurricane and Spadev Pex is gonna be able to eat it up. It's gonna do like 40-ish percent, 45 maybe. As we do see, um, the Pex Skulls. And the Pex is gonna have to recover here. If Karen doesn't, doesn't want to risk um, getting confused, Karen could also go into Salas Dealer knowing that the Pelipper is locked into a uh, Hurricane. And yeah, Karen does have Hippo, Skarm and Steeler, which is like Steeler and Hippo on the... Steeler and Skarm on the same team seems like a really weird combination to me. It's probably gonna be Rocks, Hippo and Spikes on Skarm, maybe with Whirlwind. I'm thinking that the Lily is gonna be Scarfed on Karen's side. So Sabella's fishing for crit slash confusion here, does not get it so far as Karen's gonna spam Recover to get this back healthy. Now is the time to go for Toxic Spikes slash Toxic in my opinion, because he's somewhat healthy. Uh, that's just toxic. So now the Celestia is really obvious. It's definitely gonna come out here. You don't wanna risk the Pelipper Hurricane again. I know the rain ended, so it's only 70% accurate. But Sabella should double into Zapdos here, breaking the Celestia. The problem with that is um, now Karen can just go into Hippowdon. And even if the Zapdos has Heat Wave, that's not gonna do much to the Hippowdon. The reason why I think the Zapdos might have Heat Wave is because um, there's Pelipper Specs, which means the rain is only up for a few turns. The rain is not up that long, so making heat wave on having heat wave on Zapdos makes sense. So Powder can go for rocks here, or, or maybe Stone Edge if he has that. I'm thinking that this could be double whirlwind, um, or it could be also toxic on hit powder. So just just hurricane the current one packs. There was the correct play to scalp what the Pelipper locks itself into. Karen is now gonna go back into Salus Dealer. So Bella does go into Pert as Pert with the rain up is definitely a threat um, to switch into. So Karen can maybe go for Protect or switch into Skarmory here as Sabella might, is either going to attack with uh, the Water Step, Waterfall slash Aquatel. If he has Aquatel, I think that would tweet KO with the Skarmory. So I still this Protect, let's see if he rocks, he just uh, went for Aquatel, okay. And the thing is the rain ends next turn, so maybe Skarmory can avoid the tweet KO. If Skarmory can avoid the tweet KO because the rain ends next turn, then Skarmory is definitely the play here. Sabella might um, just go for Roxy, and knowing that the Skarmory is potentially able to lift two Aquatels. The players will obviously run the Calx and they will know. Yeah, I think Aquatel will do like not enough because the rain ends next turn. Like, I don't think it will 2 it KO the Skarm, if it's defensive Skarm, that is. So I think rocking here is a fine play. So Skarmory comes out on the rocks, and Skarmory can now spikes as the Pert is going to be forced out. So Megina, we, knows, uh, we know that's AV Megina, so it's either gonna Ice Beam or Volt Switch here. I would probably go to hit Powder on here if I'm Karen, because Skarmory is nice for Katana and Swampert. It has Wilbon, so you can Wilbon out uh, sub substitute Katana as well. And if the Powder is mixed defensive, I think it should be able to eat Ice Beam or Flurk Cannon from Katana. But staying in, well, I don't know if I like that play, but I assume Karen went for Wilbon. So that's gonna be nice to get some hazard chip damage. But I'm still not the biggest fan of that play. I would have most likely gone into her powder unless it's a hip powder max defense. Because her powder should be able uh, the mixed defensive spread should be able to eat ice beam somewhat well because it's only AV and AV Megina does usually not run max special attack because they need bulk to check stuff like Ash Grin. I assume Sabella uh, is just gonna ice beam here. Not, 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 not wanting to let the hippo come in for free. But the thing is, the Skarmory is at 24 after rocks if it switches out, so Karen might also just sack the Skarmory. But if Ice Beam kills, Ice Beam is definitely the play, as it does just pick off the kill. And uh, now I think Karen has to sack something else, because the packs is not at full, and Volt Switcher plus one would hurt the packs. And Lopani definitely doesn't kill the Megina, even with Fake Out into High Jump Kick. Lily obviously doesn't kill it either, so this is. Looking good for Sabala. If you guys saw game one, it's gonna be linked in the description slash at the end of the video or both maybe. Um, yeah, check that out if you haven't seen it already. Karen, you know that Karen is up 1-0 if you have seen that. So uh, Sabala has to win this game to bring it to a game three. So it does go into Lopani and Fagot uh, into high jump kick should do like maybe 60, maybe 65, but it definitely doesn't kill. 
because I think Eddie McGinn runs max HP, right? So it's gonna be able to eat that and most likely um, kill the Lopani with Fleur Cannon. Maybe Karen is trying to just bait the Fleur Cannon and go into packs on the Fleur Cannon, but that's also kind of risky. Like, I don't think Fabella loses anything from Fleur Cannon evening. Uh, God, I kind of messed up there my sentence. I don't think he loses anything from Fleur Cannoning. Because even if uh, Karen makes the play and took Toxapex on the floor, can the Lopani already took Rocks damage, and Sabella seems to be in a good position anyways. If the Pex is low, Pelipper is also hard to switch into if you can get that in again. I know Rocks are up and all that, but it's looking like Sabella can overwhelm Karen also with Ash Greninja if Pex is low. But spamming Dark Pulse because I don't think a Powder can take Dark Pulse that well, and even if a Powder can avoid the Tweet kill from Dark Pulse uh, when it comes in on Greninja, it risks getting flinched slash crit. So Fake Out does 9%, High Jump Kick is not gonna kill, and Florican should come out, and yep, does connect, Lopani just dies. And now Toxapex, I think, all, oh, I guess not Lele is fine, yeah. Toxapex or Lele. And just Psyshock here or Moonblast. The problem here is if you Psyshock, you let the Greninja in for free, or if you Psychic. So I think I would maybe Moonblast, so does Psyshock. Now Greninja can come out for free if that is Scarf, which I'm thinking it is. The Karen's team is super slow, I think it has to be Scarf Lele. So Greninja is gonna come out here and probably click Dark Pulse, right? So Karen is maybe gonna go into um, Toxa Pex to scout what Greninja goes for, but Dark Pulse should definitely be the play. I think Pex is out of range from Dark Pulse. But the thing is, if Dark Pulse comes out, Pax is going to be super low, so it will definitely get 2 hit KO'd, which means Karen has to pivot from Pax into Hepowdon, and like I said, Hepowdon is not going to take Dark Pulse well, and it's going to risk getting flinched or crit, slash, maybe it doesn't even get, maybe it doesn't even take it well, maybe it even gets 2 hit KO'd, because Hepowdon's dev is not that great, like, even if you have summon investment, you still take a really good amount from Dark Pulse. So we see the Pax come out to scout what the Greninja locks itself into, and Dark Pulse, like I said, is going to 2 hit KO. And so now Karen is gonna have to go hit Powder on unless Karen wants to give the Greninja Ash. And that pretty much would be game over if the Greninja gets Ash here if the Pex dies. Then Karen is forced to go into Lele afterwards and lock into Moonblast. But Sabala just has great opportunities in the back, like other month. So we do see um, it does 48, so if he keeps getting that roll, hit is fine. But maybe there was a low roll. And like I said, the risk of getting crit or flinch is always there. So this is definitely in Sabala's favor. He's just gonna be able to spam Dark Pulse here. He's gonna take some chip from the sand, but the sand is also only there for a few turns. He doesn't necessarily need this Greninja super healthy. And if he gets the crit slash roll slash flinch, and the Hippowdon goes down and he gets his Ash from, then Karen is forced to go into his uh, or her Tapu Lele. I always mix up if Karen, Karen is a he or she, I think it's a she. And yeah, then Karen is forced to go into Lele if Hippo goes down and he click Moonblast. And then Sabella can like sack something and... If he sacks Pelipper, he can then go into Swamp Bird, and I think the game just ends from there. So he does get the roll there, and the game is pretty much over now. So Karen is forced into uh, Scarf Lily and click Moonblast. Pretty much confirmed that it's Scarf the way this was sent out. I mean, yeah. I thought it was Scarf earlier already, but this confirms it. Because otherwise, you would go Steela if you're not Scarf Lily, I think. So Moonblast is gonna come out. I think Sabella can afford to sack the Greninja. Um, I guess sacking the Pelipper is fine as well. Don't think it matters too much. I don't see Sabella losing this. Um, yeah, this is looking really over. Uh, Swampert just has to connect some Aqua Tails whenever it comes in in the rain and the game ends. And Zapdos also puts in a lot of work. Whenever the Lele goes down, Zapdos beats the other two months that Karen has, so it should be over. Which means we're gonna get a game 3. And whoever wins game three is um, gonna move on to grand finals of OT and face CL there. Yeah, like Karen could have played this a bit different, but I don't think it makes a huge difference. Sabella so seems like he had, um, I think he had a decent matchup in this, yeah. He's thinking Colonel Long here, um, I think. 
He can either sack the Pelipper or the Katana. He could even sack the Greninja. I don't think it plays. I don't think it makes a huge difference. Yeah. So he does sack the Pelipper. He's now gonna go in the Swampert and connect. If he connects his Aqua Tail, it gets a kill. If he misses Aqua Tail on the other side, um, that would be dangerous. But I think he doesn't die. He doesn't die for Moonblast. So even if he misses, that's fine. And I don't want. I would not want to risk the Celestia coming in the Earthquake. So I would definitely kick Aqua Tail if I'm Sabala. And as long as he hits, the game ends for sure. I guess Karen just has to like hope for dodges at this point. The Pax is also quite low, so I think even the Pax, if it's Spadef, I think it is Spadef because it was shown from how well it took Spex Pellet by Hurricane. Even the Pax would get blown away. Let's see, Celestia comes out, Aqua Tail does connect and crits, and the game just ends here. I think um, that crit obviously mattered in the sense that it Oko, I think it could have barely lived it otherwise. But I don't think it mattered in the long run. Because um, I think they would have definitely done like 70-ish if it wouldn't have crit. Maybe even 80%. And then Celestia could have protected, but it, it wouldn't have mattered in the long run. So then we're gonna be back with game 3 in a bit. Thank you guys for watching. Smash the like button if you want to see more. And goodbye.